Hi, welcome to another Mostly Mike Show 10 Minute Quickie um, Tips and Review. Today I'm going to review the Pittsburgh Tools Mini Tire Changer that I purchased from Harbor Freight Tools. I had this gem for a year or so and I'll share a few tips and tricks that I learned along the way. The clock is running so let's do this. Okay, minor disclaimer. I already began editing and I'm realizing that this is not going to be a two minute quickie. The content is way too involved to cover this tire change in two minutes. Instead, I'll be crossing the 10 minute mark. Watch closely and thoroughly because the joke to minute ratio is higher than normal in this video. Please enjoy. Like most people watching this video, I have a Ryan riding lawn aerator sitting in my garage with a flat tire that won't hold air. And if yours is like mine, the tire is probably only flat on the bottom. Like the old saying goes, the smaller the rim, the tougher it is to get the tires off and on. In other words, changing one of these tires can be a real bugger. I won't waste too much of the clock on removing the wheel from my machine because that's not what this quickie is about, or what you came here to see. So we have the wheel on the bench, and mounted on this bench is the Pittsburgh Tools Mini Tire Changer. Proudly made right in downtown Pittsburgh, um, China. So here's pretty much what you get in the box. You get the main body of the tire changer. You get this piece of all thread that goes through the rim, of course. A bead breaker, the bead breaker arm. There's a fulcrum point, the main base that bolts down to your bench or base of choice. And you have a couple spaces and a locking pin to hold the main body into the base. And then you got your uh, tire putter on her, I guess you'd call it, for stretching the tire back onto the rim. And what I actually found very helpful, I have a two inch to a half inch bell reducer. I'll show you a little later in the video what this is good for. I would highly recommend getting one of these. It doesn't have to be brass. Uh, cast iron will work, PVC will probably work. The mini tire changer can be bolted right to the bench with the red mounting block which seems to be most sturdy, or the unit can be clamped in a bench vise. Either way should work, but I would consider bolting this thing to the bench as the preferred method. I'll be sure to add links in the description for this mini tire changer, as well as extra things that will make the process go smooth as butter on shingles. After watching this video, you should qualify as a mini tire changing expert, unless you're not. So I'm going to mount the wheel and tire to the tire changer. Depending on the dimensions of your wheel, there's several different options with the spacers and pinholes provided in the kit. The pivot point screws down either way, where I'll attach the bead breaker tool. Removing the valve gut is definitely advantageous to make the tire pliable. So before we do anything, we're going to remove the valve cap, take our valve gut tool, remove the valve stem. It has that little forked end on it if you're not familiar with what a valve gut removal tool is. And you're just going to pull this little stem out of here. And that would be the valve gut. And there's your valve gut. Finally got it to focus. You may have to loosen this uh, up a little bit and raise it or whatever to find that sweet spot on here. I usually try to get it to where it's when it's in this position that you can get it right on the edge of the rim itself because that's where the business is being done as far as breaking the bead goes. And there we got it to break. And just work your way around and that side's done. So we're going to remove it. And man that air inside smells unbelievable. I'm sure you know what old tire air smells like. It takes about 979 turns to get it off the top. They, they include a rubber handle that goes up top here to make it ergonomic. As you can see, this isn't killing my hands to do what I'm doing here. And pop. After breaking the bead, we'll need to use the tire removal and installation tool to run the bead off the wheel. A simple solution of dish soap and a splash of water is a huge help if you're like me and don't have bead lube. Any brand should work. Some folks like to go in dry, but trust me, lube helps immensely and just feels better. So we're going to dub a little of this uh, soapy solution to the inside of the rim to lubricate it. It's also important to lube your tool. A lot of people like to go in dry, but I find it better to be well lubricated. I'm compressing the tire with one hand to create enough gap to get the bead end in, and holding the tire from turning with the other hand. 
I'm prying off the nylon spacer with my third hand whilst the tire works its way off the rim. And it's not always fun. These little tires are wide tires on little rims. A few minutes later. Yeah, this is not a walk in the park getting these off sometimes. Once it gets moving, look at that, it just popped. And we're gonna repeat on the other side. Repeat for the other side, and then repeat again if your rim has more than two bead surfaces. Just kidding. Or am I? Yep, just kidding. Or am I? And there it goes. And this is where the party begins. You may want to remove the valve stem while you're this far, which I'll include Amazon links for these below, which really helps this channel out if you click the link before ordering anything from Amazon. Hole looks pretty clean. Sometimes you gotta wire wheel these holes to make sure that there's no rust caked up around them, which can cause leakage. This thing looks okay. And all the surfaces are dent free. They look actually relatively clean with a zinc chromate looking primer that's on them. These are relatively inexpensive. A tubeless valve stem installation tool, or as I call it, a putter inner. You just stick it through the hole twist it in and then get on the opposite side uh, like and use the rim as a fulcrum point just there it goes right in. so here we have our brand new tire and before you put a tire on like this you got to make sure that they're not directional which there's no markings indicating direction on this tire and if you've ever seen one of those riding lawn aerator, aerator, aerators move it's actually pretty slow. You can walk 10 times faster than that thing goes. These things aren't made to take to the racetrack. So I'm gonna start by applying some lube to the bead edges of the tire. And usually these newer tires are a little bit softer material because they, well, they weren't sitting around in the sun and the elements for the past 20 years. And I think you'd be softer too if you didn't. We're gonna get it started down over the rim and take our our rim, our tire putter on her. And this is where our extra tool comes in handy. If I remember this correctly, we're gonna leave this bushing on and here's our two inch to one half inch bell reducer. I'm gonna stick that down over top of that bushing. Well, we're gonna get the rim on, but I'll show you what, what's going on under here. When we take our tire putter on her and put it back in, See how it gives it a place to rest against? Our aluminum spacer gives you a fulcrum point up top to pry against so you can put downward pressure on it. And that helps put the tire on. I just did that so you could see better. So once we get the tire on, you're gonna have a harder time actually seeing what goes on inside here. Take the, the nut as usual. And with this wide of a tire on that small of a rim, you know, you gotta wrestle everything a little bit. But here's what the goal is now. Once we get that, the rim started down over one side, we can get the tool around to where we can actually run the tire down onto the rim. And there it popped right on. That was not an easy job. But the second one actually should be a little bit easier. And it varies which end you're gonna need uh, to put them on or take them out. Usually this uh, flat edge on here runs against the rim. So, I'm gonna apply a little bit more lube, lubrication to the, uh, to the beating surfaces of the tire. And we're gonna get one side stretched in and sometimes that's way easier said than done. It's actually easier if you can apply the pressure from this end. Hopefully, boy, I almost smashed my camera there. Don't expect this thing to put the rim on by itself because it ain't gonna happen, buddy. You can see by the sweat on my brow, this is no fun. 
once you get it partially around, you're better off, as I said before, push the tire down as far into this groove as you can. There's like a deep part in the center. That way, when you push against here, see how I'm prying up and turning at the same time, and there the tire went on. What a bugger, I'm telling you. Now we're ready to seat the bead. I mean, in one of my other videos, I'll include the link uh, below and maybe up in the, uh, the top right here. I made this thing called a tourniquet, which is basically like a tourniquet that, that you apply around the tire and then you can tighten it down to force the tire in in the middle, which will make the outer edges force against the rim. Uh, when you're using a tire of this dimension um, on a rim that small, generally there's enough seating surface around here that's already applying pressure toward the rim. You might want to add a little bit more of the soapy water around those edges to create a better seal, but the rush of air from an air compressor should seat this thing right away. Please put any questions or comments below, check out my other videos, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks for taking part in this 10 minute quickie. Was it good for you?